Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today started camming in high school Mm -hmm. and then has grown her career in the porn industry over the last decade. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the pleasure of working with her yet. This is, in fact, my first time meeting her. So I'm very thrilled to get to know the beautiful Madison Morgan. Oh, well, thank you. What an introduction. You're welcome. I'm thrilled to get to know you as well. Yes. Also, if you don't mind me asking, what camera are we supposed to look at? So we should look at each other for okay. the most part. This is the wide. This is my camera. If you want to address the audience, that's your You know camera. what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> like at icon. the end, you know, have you plugged your socials? Like that would be... Oh, you know, the camera you would look at. It would just be like uh, if you're addressing the audience, you know, like, POV style. Yeah, exactly. Like you and I are chatting about something oh. and you're like. So this is the sex tape and style do... and this is the POV style. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got That's a it. great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> and in terms I can understand. Yes. Yes. So, um, I mean, I feel like we already, you know, have gotten to know each other. The first thing I saw was your boob downstairs <laughs> because it was coming out she's like hey she's like here's my boob can you help me zip up and I'm well, like, of course should we tell the, real, so real quick i'm like trying to get out of my house my poor makeup artist left had just left and i didn't think to ask her to help me zip so i'm like i, I could do this you know i got this and i'm like E-e-e-e. yeah and then i'm like oh, oh dear we're running late we gotta go so i just threw on my leather jacket and uh in the uber ride i just kept hiding it so the titty don't pop yeah i think he caught a little glimpse but it's okay well you know i mean you probably made his day (laughs) thanks i mean i feel like uber drivers don't always have like the most exciting stories to come home with well some of us so if you got a little flash oh do you have uh, do you have some uber stories i've two uber drivers before really i did i didn't know we were gonna go there so quickly okay well clearly you have to tell us a story well of course (laughs) Well, um, I had to find someone who was cute, of course, because I was like, mm, you know, you, you can kind of picture. Kind of, kind of, let's be real. But I was like looking for someone around like my age who, because mm. uh, when I first started doing OnlyFans, like guy friends of mine were like, yo, can I be on it? It's such yeah, a- of course. And then I was like, hey, as your friend, you're going to get a girlfriend in six months and she's going to hate you for this. Mm. Like, and then we can't hang out. So, No. That's but, really kind of you. Oh, hey. Like, thoughtful. Oh, thank you so much. I was like, <laughs> hey, your girlfriend and I, is, your girlfriend is not going to be cool with us yeah. being friends at this. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways. Um, so, I kept, like, requesting them and requesting them. And after, like, the fourth one, I was like, okay, this guy looks around my age. And it, he looks like, I had, like, a weird feeling. I was like, this could be someone who would do it and, like, tell his friends that it's, like, a funny story. Mm-hmm. So, I got in there and, like. You can see on the video, I'm, like, holding the camera, like, on the floor to, like, record our conversation. And I'm, like, oh, like, what's your name? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, small talk to, like, get a feel for their personality. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I go, like, oh, do you have a girlfriend? They're, like, no, no, I don't. I'm, like, oh, it's like, do you know what OnlyFans is? And they're, like, fuck yeah, I know what OnlyFans is, blah, blah, blah. And I was, like, well, would you actually want to be on mine? Like, I was like, I will, uh, I'll pay you, like, if you just, like, fill out the paperwork, like, we won't put your face in it. Yeah. But if you want to be on it, like, wow. I guess you can hear their voice. I'm like, no one will necessarily know it's you. Right. And both of the times they're like, yeah. So, okay, so you've done this with two Uber yeah. drivers. How many have you approached and? Well, uh, the ones that... Those two worked out only because I kept looking at the person, and then if they didn't look like the right fit, I would cancel. Hmm. So I canceled on a bunch before I got those. Okay. Okay. So I see. So you yeah. order an Uber. Yeah. You wait for their photo to pop up. Yeah. And you decide whether or not they're good. Because <laughs> if they're in their like forties, they probably won't, because they don't know like what only. They may not know what OnlyFans is, or they're, like, right. married, or I don't know. So I was like, guys in, like, their late 20s, early 30s are probably going to be more down. Yeah. Okay, so then do you fuck them in the car, or yeah, do you go? Oh. Well, one, we, like, fucked in his car, and then we were, he was like, do you want to come to my place? And I was like, mm, sure. <laughs> and then, okay, so then it continued from there. Yeah. How were they? Because, I mean, you know, you and I both know working in the adult industry for a long mm-hmm. time. Like, a lot of guys say they can do the job, and when oh, it comes yeah. down to it, they can't necessarily fulfill their obligations. So how how did these guys do? They did pretty fucking good. Huh. Like, if someone's freaky enough to, like, fuck a girl they just That's met true. for OnlyFans, like, and they're, like, confident enough to have their dick on the internet... They're going to be decent. Yeah. I guess that's true because, you know, a lot of times when we're, th- when I'm thinking about 
you know, guys failing on set. It's always like on a big professional set with like a bunch oh of people gosh, yeah. and it's like you or, know, a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. This is, I guess, this is no different. pressure kind of thing. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I can't Im- You know that like they went home and told their friends and no one believed them. Of course they didn't. Like I did send them. We kept in touch though. And I was like, hey, here's your video. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah, of course. Like I paid them. I had them sign the paperwork, you know, like. I can't, this guy's just like, wow, this isn't such a bad job after all. <laughs> like every other person that gets in his car, he's like, hmm, is this the one? Is this like, the one? No, nah, man, that happen. was a one off. <laughs> so how did you get into the adult industry in the first place? Okay, so I love my parents. They're the best people in the world, but we did not get along. So I'm not, I just always feel kind of bad telling the story because mm-hmm. it makes it sound like a sob story, but it's not. Mm-hmm. But um I got kicked out of the house a lot because they're um, very, very, very religious. And they had like, they're like, you're going to be like the head of the cheerleading committee and you're going to like help us like with church and you're going to do that. Like, you know, that, they that's all like plans like, for you. Yeah. They're like type A, like super over great people, but like super overachievers, yeah. like very strict. Yeah. Um, And I, I say that I love them, but they're very overbearing. Mm-hmm. So. When I got older, I was like, I don't want to do all that. Like, that's your life choice. And then um, uh, I didn't come home on homecoming because uh, I was like, you know what? I work two jobs. I'm getting good grades. I'm staying out. <laughs> I am not coming home. And also, mm-hmm. I, I knew I was going to be drinking. So Right, right. So my friends and I threw, like, a party, like, a suite. And I said, like, you know, fuck them. Like, I'm staying here. So I got back. And then it turned into, like, this whole, like, battle of, like, the wills. And then they came back and said, like, well, you can't live here anymore. So, like, well, what am I going to do? I work at IHOP and Pizza. Like, I can't, you, you, like, I can't make a living for myself. And they were like, yep, exactly. So find somewhere to live. So I stayed with my friend and her family. God bless them. <coughs> uh, we still talk. They're, like, my second parents. But mm-hmm. um, this girl on Facebook, she kept posting, make $200 a day. Make $200 a day. And I made eight twenty five. Mm-hmm. So $200 a day. Well, come on now. Yeah. So I was like, what is it? She was like, it's this, like, some vague shit. It was right. super sketchy, but I was desperate because mm-hmm. I knew that it was a power move. And, of course, like, they were going to make me – they were going to do this again. Mm-hmm. And I was, again, oh, I was in my senior year of high school, and mm-hmm. I had just turned 18. So I was like, oh, I can't do this. So anyways, um, and none of my friends had gotten kicked out or moved out. Like, mm-hmm. I had no one to go live with. So anyways, um, I go to the building. It's like this warehouse in the middle of Las Vegas. And then I met, um, he actually became my ex fiance, funny mm-hmm. enough. But the guy, I got there and he was like smart enough to like not tell me like in full detail. What did he tell you? He uh, used to recruit girls for uh, porn mm-hmm. <laughs> for like their first scene. So he's a mm-hmm. smooth talker. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was like, you just chat with them, you play girlfriend, like, Blah, blah, so this like, is for a camming site. Yeah. yeah. And okay. so he left. So he's basically he got to where you said you get paid to eat and sleep. And I was like, paid to eat and sleep? Oh, I'll be there. Yeah. And then by the time training day came around, then he was like, oh, yeah. And this is when you get naked and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm already here. Yeah. By the time you're like, you're already like in it. Yeah. So I got like tricked into it. But I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm glad it happened. Right, right. It ended yeah. up working out for you, but it wasn't what you expected. No, I'm glad you didn't. Honestly, I'm so thankful you didn't tell me right off the bat because I would have ran out. Right. Okay, so then how – so are you li- – is it a cam house that you're living in? It was a webcam studio, so it's like okay. an old warehouse. Okay. And they convert all the rooms to like okay. a big bedroom. But did you stay there or were you – No, you just no, I lived at home, there? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Because yeah. I've heard about those cam houses that like girls stay there. And no, like, I did not want to stay it there. It almost becomes like a situation where they find no, it difficult to leave. Girl, there was so much drama. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Ugh. So, okay, so what was your first like camming experience like? Um, well, I was like uh, – you know, I was definitely an active girl in high school. Like, I definitely was very sexual, but I was like, just, you know, like, shamed a lot for it. Mm-hmm. Like, cause we're every, you know, they're kids, but I was like the school slut, like, everywhere mm-hmm. I went. Mm-hmm. So I had this boyfriend at the time, um, and I was like, kind of scared to tell him. And he, what, what happened? Like, he, he finally sat me down one day. He was like, we have no future together. We are never gonna, like, get married. Like, this is not happening for us. And mm-hmm. I was like, 
great. So, so I solidified the decision. Okay. So later I told him I started camming, and to his credit, he actually was super cool about it. Mm-hmm. His now fiance, I think, does it. Like, oh, on the same website building. I know. Doesn't everybody he, know? To his credit, though, at least, like, he sucked, but at least he was like, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so at that point, I was like, well, nothing top of me. So, and then how did you find, did, did you find that you liked it? I mean, I'm mm-hmm. sure the money was Loved pretty it. impressive coming from working at IHOP and Pizza Hut. Oh, yeah. I think I made, like, $200 my first day. And I said, and I waited for my check because I was like, it's a scam. It's a scam. Then yeah. I got my first check and I said, back, like, bounce. Yeah. So how did your career progress from there? So the webcam thing is great, but it is the same exact thing over yeah. and over and over and over over again and aren't aren't you guys like sometimes on those webcams for like a really long time like eight i've heard girls do like eight 12 Uh, 16 hour shifts it took a lot of adderall for me (laughs) (laughs) some girl in there was like uh, that i didn't like said she made a thousand so i was like fuck her and i popped an adderall (laughs) but um yeah no it it was such a fun job but it just was stagnant there's nowhere to really grow from because Mm -hmm. uh because I was on streaming and those girls are so like undercover, if that makes sense. Mm. Like you don't really hear about cam girls. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm an extrovert, like I need to be around people. So I said like, hey, I wanna, like I kept going back and forth like, oh, I should do, I had a couple girls that left and said, you should do porn. I was like, mm, like, I don't know. And then I actually met Mike Adriano about okay. four years ago. Mm-hmm. And I met a couple of girls who were former porn girl. Oh, sorry, I'm like so skipping. Let me start with the girls. Okay. So I met two girls that were super cool. They had just re- kind of retired from porn and they were like the coolest, nicest, like so comfortable with themselves. And I love how liberated they were. Mm-hmm. Whereas the webcam girls were very like one foot in, one foot out. Totally. Yeah. They like yeah. didn't want anyone to know. And like yeah. that just, I feel so bad for them that the, the anxiety they had. Mm-hmm. But the girls who had done porn were just so free and like mm-hmm. happy. And I was like, yeah. oh, you know, so. Anyways, after meeting them, I was like, okay, they got the, you know, the ball rolling. And then, um, uh, and then I met Mike Adriano out in LA a couple years ago and he was like, Hey, you should do porn. And I was like, really? Like, cause he, you know, he's been around forever. He's mm-hmm. like a notorious director. I was like, okay, if this guy thinks I can do porn, like that's it. And then, but still I was like, Oh, I, I don't, I don't know yet if I'm ready to be that exposed. Mm-hmm. And then premium Snapchat rolled around. Mm, God, it's so funny how like that kind of really rose and then kind of tanked a little bit. Like it went like, oh my God, seriously, it was like the quickest come up and the biggest yeah. fall. Down. Yeah, I know. Once OnlyFans came around, it was like dead. That Snapchat thing died. Also, also, two people were getting deleted all the time, so that was a problem. Right. So Snapchat didn't. This is what I've heard. So Snapchat was cool with it because they're yes. like, great, they're bringing us tons of traffic. Like they did not personally care, but then Apple came down on them and said, yeah. hey, if you don't clean up, we are getting rid totally. of you um, as an app on our store. Yeah, I mean, it's such a typical story, right? Like mm-hmm. these platforms build a business on the backs of sex workers. And then once they get to a certain level, they mm-hmm. try to like clean up their platform and like literally kick off all of the people that may- put them where they are. Yeah, like we need you. Yeah. <laughs> Hundred percent. Okay, so you were doing premium yeah. Snapchat. Yeah. So I got introduced. Do you know who Viking Barbie is? Vicky. Viking Barbie. Oh, Viking Barbie. Yes. Yes. So Viking Barbie hit me up and she was like, "Hey, because I, I'm not like a hippie or anything, but I sat down a few days before they contacted me and I was like, I need to like have a full career in this. I'm done doing one foot in, one foot out. Mm-hmm. Like I want to like actually make some real money, like and mm-hmm. not just cam, just because I was so burnt out and bored. Mm-hmm. Um. But she hit me up on Instagram. She was like, hey, I manage this person, this person, this person. They make good money. Do you want us to train you and, like, be a part of our group? And I was like, "Mm, okay, I don't know how to do any of this by myself. Mm -hmm. So she, uh, to her credit, taught me, like, everything I know. Um, Her and the other person, like, ran the company. But, yeah, they were kind of, like, my mentors. They taught me, like, how to, like, make the content, sell it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um. So they, I, I owe them a lot. And then after a while, I started OnlyFans because I already knew what I was doing by myself at that point. So mm-hmm. I took charge of my own OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing well on OnlyFans and I was shooting content with like uh, like Manuel Ferreira and like um, like Riley Reed And uh, sorry, I sound so – I'm like totally name dropping here. I'm sorry. No, no, no. But like all these, I mean, like, these are big names. Yeah, yeah, like all these people. I was like Johnny, not gonna Johnny shoot Sins. Like, yeah, totally. Yeah, because I also had – a 
a couple million fo- or a million followers at that point. So mm-hmm. I was, oh yeah, sorry, I was an Instagram model too. So I was already like naked. Oh, so I already yeah. had a big following. So I was shooting with all these like bigger names. Mm-hmm. And then all my shit got leaked all over Pornhub because they were like, so-and-so banks Instagram model. And I was like, mm-hmm. huh, okay. And then I did a podcast with um, a, a friend of mine. Uh, his name's Brent Prella, shout out. Mm-hmm. But he was like, oh, since you're a porn star, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, like I knew I did porn, but I was like a porn star, me? I know. What? There's like an interesting like controversy and discussion even between like, what does being a porn star mean versus like doing porn versus now there's like content creators. It's like, what, right. what decides each title? I don't know. I, I respect everybody in the hierarchy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Yeah, exactly everybody so oh yeah the uh drake's baby mama so yes i heard i have that in my notes yes. about um you made the leap from camming to porn having to do something to do with drake's baby mama so what is yeah what is that story so um when he it came out in the news like drake's having a baby they all said he's having a baby with a porn star oh my god oh my god and then you look her up and it's just a cam girl she's mm-hmm. just like you know, chilling in her room, doing her little strip tease. And I'm not the, knocking her at all she, whatsoever, mm-hmm. um, but she's like obviously a successful cam girl. Mm-hmm. So I was like, wait a second. If I'm going to be considered a porn, I'm going to have the title of a porn star, I should be the best I can be. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, let's let's go all the way. People are going to call me that anyways. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. So, I mean, you've already been doing scenes, right? You mentioned like Manuel and Riley and Johnny. Mm-hmm. So what was your first like professionally shot porn scene? Um, so I got really lucky enough. Uh, big companies had scouted me and asked me to work for them. So that was another reason that I, I had guaranteed work lined up. Mm-hmm. So Brazzers hit me up and a couple other ones. But Brazzers was like, we will offer you a contract. Mm. I was like, Okay. Yeah. So it was just, it was a small contract, mind you, but I was like, if I start with a Brazzers contract, that's not going to yeah, hurt. And they're a good company to start with. Oh, they're the best. So yeah. my first scene was with Abigail Mack. Oh my God. You can't do better than that. You She's can't. amazing. You fucking can. Yeah. Shout out to Sandra from OC for setting that up. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they uh, dressed you up as an angel. She was the devil. Mm-hmm. And uh, and trust me, by the way, if you guys watch all my videos, I there are some scenes that are not that good. Let me just tell you, I have not like nailed every scene. Mm-hmm. But we did the scene. It went really well. And then at the end of it, I heard them talking. And they were like, that doesn't seem like her first scene. She did great. And then Yay. Abigail was so nice. She was like, you're better than like so-and-so. Or like, you're better than a lot of people out there. Like, yeah. keep, please like keep doing this. Yeah, that's awesome. Abigail is so lovely. She is lovely. It was so yeah. cool. It's like, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a great first experience to have. Oh, yeah, the best. So you were like, so you knew then that this was the path, the right path for you. Yes. And also, sorry, last, sorry, this is such a long story. But last thing I'll say is the last two guys I dated told me you should do porn. Ah, so you knew it was like in the cards. Yeah, they were. The universe like, was telling you. They were, and they even sat me down. And they were again, like they liked me, but like, did they really want to marry me and have kids? No, but they liked me and still cared about me. But mm-hmm. they, two different guys, were like, "This is your calling. You should mm-hmm. do this." Yeah. So how long have you been in the industry now? Professionally, about two years. Professionally, about two years. And have you like what goals have you hit, and what goals do you still have ahead of you? I want to shoot for Black.com so badly. Okay so badly and they never never hit me back <laughs> <laughs> and then what um i mean you already did browsers so yes. that was a big thing um any other like big goals in mind uh anything vixen related i would love to do deeper like a whole story i also want to shoot for johnny darko mm-hmm. we've been chatting um so basically you just want to work with all the big guys yeah uh, twisties i want to work with twisties and my number one dream and i'm not just saying this because you're here is playboy plus <laughs> i've watched the girl you know like like any other reasonable slut back in the day but i watched like all the, the show i read every book about him mm-hmm. like i have like everything playboy but that's my dream is playboy yeah yeah i mean I this think- is not to pressure you by the way that's oh just- i don't work for them anymore oh, okay then perfect yeah, yeah. so i sa- sadly i cannot <laughs> I cannot help no, 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 but anymore. Yeah. But um, I will. Say, I mean, I shot for them for like I was like their top producer for like nice. seven years. 
So Blacked but and Playboy, top two. I feel like I feel like you have this in your future. <gasps> really? Yeah. I got you're gorgeous. Thank you. Um, and I, I watched a couple of your podcasts actually before you came on. Oh um, dear. I saw the <laughs> no no no. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. I didn't see all of them. Yeah. Um, I saw the one about uh the the plastic surgery one. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, with the. <laughs> With My lovely friend Morgan. And oh. he breaks into song. Yeah. That was actually really cute. Oh, yeah. I he, thought that was a really clever little, yeah. like, I was like, you know what? If this show ever becomes, like, big, where I get, yeah. like, a big, like, I don't know, talk show thing. Like, I want someone on a keyboard to, like, right. make little songs about, like, stories oh. that we tell. I thought that was really cute Super touch. Super cute. Can I shout him out? Is that okay? Of course. Uh, Morgan J, amazing comedian. Um, he sings and, like, uh, he's and he's a buddy of mine. And mm-hmm. he was like, is it okay if I ask? Like, you know. Yeah. No, he was re- he was really sweet about it. But your butt yeah. is real. My butt is real. I Which know. Which is, uh, and it's a lovely ass. I will send you, like, a picture later. Like, uh, it's one in high school where you can see the date from my mm. Facebook. To You're prove like, it. To prove it. Yeah. Um, It's funny, though, because all my friends would come up, my guy friends would come over and, like, meet my mom. Mm-hmm. And they all go, hey, I'm going to be your stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> also, I see where you get your butt from. Yeah. <laughs> and then my brother has the same butt too and i was like what do girls think about it he goes they think it's cute <laughs> i got it was really funny i saw a guy at like some restaurant that we oh that's what it was my husband and i went to deuce yesterday for our wedding anniversary oh and, congrats thank you and there was a guy there a waiter in like really tight pants and i was like wow my like, God, all right sir nice. i mean girls yeah girls sir. notice guys asses sir so, oh, oh i'm so sorry can i tell you one more funny story of course so my own th- my own parents who gave birth to me they know where i got it from i always wear like baggy homeless man clothes when i'm with my family because mm-hmm. you know but i was walking around in like tight leggings one day or like a bodysuit and my dad came up to me and like he and my he goes hey your mom and i were like wondering um did you get work done on your butt like it's okay if you did like we would totally approve it's okay but like d- did you i'm like no i got it from you what the f- <laughs> Your good genes. I guess he'd never really looked at it before. <laughs> that's that's good. No, he was obviously it wasn't like a weird way. He was just yeah. like, yeah. So like your mom and I talked about it. Just curious. <laughs> yes. Anyways. So um, so you mentioned that your parents were very religious. You very, got thrown yeah. out a lot as a kid. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like now you guys have a good relationship. We do now. Yeah. And how did that? Did it take a while for it to come about? Yes. Um, I. What happened was with them, like, I still don't agree with them kicking me out so many times. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. But I think me doing adult actually weirdly brought us closer together. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because they kind of do blame themselves Mm because they didn't help with me starting, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, But they've just grown. I I feel bad for them now that I'm older and I kind of understand, but they were like younger than I was when they had me and got Mm. married. And the church they were in at the time was like, it was out here in Southern California, but it was basically a cult, Mm. like just weird stuff. Like, uh, we had a nanny growing up and my dad is like not a creepy man. He's not like a pervert. Like I would honestly bet my life. He's never cheated my mom. Like he's Mm -hmm. just not that kind of guy. Um, but he had our nanny sit in the front seat one time when my mom was like out of town and she's, she's the other only adult in the car. So that makes sense. Right. So we pull up to the parking lot and then one of the uh, elder pastors like comes out to him and goes like, I don't want to say his name. But he's like, I need to talk to you right now, right now, get out of the car and start in front of all of us starts like screaming at him. He's like, the nerve of you, you are so disrespectful to your wife for having her sit in the front seat. That is not your wow. wife. Like, and if, again, in front of his own family. Yeah. So the next time we went to church the next week, um, because I thought that was weird. I was like, probably like 11. I was like, this is weird. That's a very disrespectful to the nanny. It's like you're not treating her that like poor, a human being. Like she's a servant. She used to sit in the back. Like that's not. You're cool. so, you're a poor woman. She didn't do anything yeah. wrong. My mom does not care. Yeah. So the next week they're like, Hey, we need you to sit in the front. I go, why? Just oh, to like, yeah. And they're like, we don't have time. You just have to sit in the front. Mm-hmm. Like weird stuff like that. Yeah. So how do you feel about religion? Are you religious in any way? No. Do you believe in God at all? Do you have any kind of spiritual? Like, because I know mm-hmm. that some people, you know, they grow up in a very religious household and then yeah. they become like absolute staunch atheists or mm-hmm. they just 
cultivate like a different understanding about right. spirituality in the universe. What's your take? I think there's something beyond our own belief. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if it's like aliens or like, I don't think there's like a God who sits there and watches our day-to-day actions, like the Christian version. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we do have a divine creator of some sort. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's like wrong. Or I don't know if people are probably going to be like, I mean, stuff, look, but... like nobody knows what it is, right? I, I like think, all of us yeah. can say what we believe, but that's only what we believe. No one has concrete evidence for anything. No so one I think does. whatever makes sense for you. Right. If that works for you yeah. and like helps you, like gives you comfort in your life and like helps guide you totally. like along your chosen path, then, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's aliens, like. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. You know what yeah, I mean? even if it's aliens. <clears throat> like, um, so I have read the Bible twice. Mm-hmm. They've read it 15 times each. Wow. They read every day. Wow. But I remember, and if you anybody who's read the Bible, the Old Testament is like, God is like how you think a world leader would be. He's kind of a tyrant. He's like, not like Hitler, but he's like how a world leader would act. Mm-hmm. And then the New Testament is like hippie Jesus, like, mm-hmm. This and that. So if I were to pick a religion, it would jef- definitely uh, be Judaism. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom's Jewish. We're, I'm actually Jewish. You can't tell by mm-hmm. the looks of me. But anyways, um, I think their story makes more sense if it's real. And mm-hmm. I think that there's a divine creator of some sort somewhere that we don't understand. Um, and uh, what was my last, last point in that? But I do support people who are religious. If mm-hmm. that makes them happy and that's uh, their thing. Like, uh, do you watch South Park? Yes. Have you ever seen the episode where they talk about the Book of Mormon? Uh, I mean, I've seen the Book of Mormon, the play that the guys yeah, ended up yeah. making. But, I mean, probably, but I'm not sure. You have you might have to jog my memory. Oh, okay. So, basically, like, and uh, Trey and Matt, the creators, they're mm-hmm. uh, from a Mormon family. But they meet this, like family this kid and like they're you know kind of like your typical religious family like they're so like overly nice almost Mm like can we get you dinner like let's finger paint they're like this Mm -hmm. big happy family um and then randy of course is like let's convert to this Mm because he's randy Mm -hmm. um and then finally uh stan like reads the book of mormon he's like this is shit this doesn't make any sense (laughs) i don't get it and then finally um he talks to the guy about it and he's like why do you believe this this is illogical he goes you know what? It doesn't have to make sense. That's okay. It keeps me and my family extremely happy. And that's all that matters. Don't you love it when you get those like pearls of wisdom from South Park? <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> I made my dad watch some episodes with me too. He likes some of them. Have you seen the Book of Mormon, the play? Have you ever gone to I see it? I haven't, sadly. Dude, it's so fucking good. I bet. It's one of the best musicals I've ever seen. Really? And I'm not like a big musicals person. Yeah. It's so good. Nice. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to catch Book of Mormon, I highly recommend it. It's even if you're not, like I said, if you're not a musicals person, you will fucking love it. Oh, no, I am for the right one. It's so good. Let's talk about the sound of music any day. <laughs> Actually, can I tell you a funny story? Yes. Um, you know McBlue? Yes. So I always, um, you know, he's, he's gorgeous. And he has those, like, piercing blue eyes. Mm-hmm. But I met him, and I was like, where is he from? They're like, he's from Austria. So I go, hi, I love your German accent. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> the look of a guy who goes, I'm just kidding. I know you're from Austria. <laughs> but um, I always call him Captain Von Trapp. Okay. And then uh, we were doing like a, a tag team scene with him and Scott Nails mm-hmm. uh, for Brazzers. And then I like, at some point I grabbed uh, Mick's dick and I was like, the hills are alive. Oh my God, he must have loved that. <laughs> I don't know how amusing. Everybody else thought it was amusing. <laughs> let, me, let me guess it didn't make it into the final scene, sadly. I hope it did. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then yeah. we'll be right back. With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, 
Plus, enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. All right, guys, we are back. So, Madison. Um, so, what is, Holly. <laughs> so, Madison. What has been the biggest challenge you've had to overcome in the adult industry? Wow. Um, uh, people pretending they're your friend when they're not. Mm. And people who, because I'm kind of, I still have like that church mentality, I mm-hmm. realized. But I kind of like still thought like, oh, everyone like wants to be friends. Everyone's so, and there are great people who are my friends in the adult industry. Yeah. But uh, I definitely had like a bad year last year and it was like, pretty public, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did lose a lot of like friends, which I'm not sad about at all. Um, I gained some great friendships, but um, just the the clout chasing and like when you're on top, like people are secretly like rooting for your, de- not that I was ever on top, but when mm-hmm. you're doing well, people are like secretly like rooting for your downfall. Mm-hmm. And that was probably the most difficult thing yeah. to deal with. I, I think that you probably see that in almost every industry. I mean, uh, yeah, people are jealous by nature. It's so hard to not want to be the best. And it's so hard to like, it can be very difficult to feel good for the person who succeeds you. Right. I mean, that takes a lot of emotional maturity. It does. Um, And I feel like that's, that's something that you probably see in the entertainment industry in general, like everywhere. All so the time. All the I think time. these are understandable challenges. They are, yes. Okay, um, a couple questions. Okay. Uh, sex advice from a porn star, because I know uh-huh. a lot of men need it. Uh, so first of all, burning question, Let's so important. What is the ideal penis size for you? I love an average. Hmm. I love an average. Oh, really? So what's average to you? Like a six, okay, six and a half, maybe a seven, because okay. I like to do anal like whenever I want. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you have like a six or a seven, we can like do anal pretty easily. Mm-hmm. And I like, and I'll say this actually, my buddy Nathan Bronson has mm-hmm. the best feeling dick in porn. Mm-hmm. The best feeling, it just curves up a little bit, like. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's not like a monster dick. No, but he's no, got no. like a great size. Oh my gosh, no, he has like the the best. I told his uh, f- his fiance, our friends. Like, she, mm-hmm. she thought she was like, oh my god, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, I saw photos of her. I I'd never seen her before, but she's beautiful. Oh my gosh, she's dark. Oh, oh. Really pretty. I love Nathan. He's such a nice. I haven't seen him in a while because I haven't shot boy girl in Aww. forever. But Nathan is so great. She's equally nice, actually. I gotta say. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um. So yeah, like a Nathan Bronson dick is like. Mwah. <laughs> Mwah, chef's kiss, Nathan, mwah. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, last question. What are men doing wrong in the bedroom? I think that they're not being clear. Hmm. So one thing that's great about being on a porn set, and it's not the sexiest conversation, but it's a great conversation to have, is like they'll literally sit you down and say like, what do you like or not like? Mm-hmm. So people, it's very clinical but like people will literally come, walk up to each other if there's no checklist for that for the boundary company. checklist for and they'll say yeah. like hey like what are you into what do you yeah. not like blah 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 yeah so i think that's cool even if it's clinical it works in the long run yeah but uh i would just my best advice would be to be clear don't be shy and like tell them exactly what you want they will be grateful mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's like it, it's hard right because yes getting all that information out there, you know, would you would assume would lead to a better experience because mm. everybody's different. You can't really guess no. what someone's going to like. Yeah. We have the, you know, we're fortunate enough in the adult industry where, you know, now especially we have boundary checklists where yeah. we sit down and we, you know, the performance director, we all go over everything beforehand. Yeah. So, like, you know what you're getting into. But that's a job, right? Yeah. This is a profession. But, yeah, it's like, and I think that the Even movies. Even in my normal life, I, I ask that now. Well, right, because you have had this experience yeah. in adult and you're probably more comfortable with your sexuality yeah. and talking about it. But the everyday person, I feel. It's too shy to ask. It's too shy to ask. Like, and you get sold this idea in the movies that you're just going to run into each other's it's arms. Automatic. And you're going to know exactly what that other person wants. And there's this magic and everything's perfect. Mm-hmm. And then, of course. Because in the movies, you always orgasm at the same time. Oh, always. You never not orgasm. At the same time. Oh, wait, what, one thing I did learn this year, mm. I learned how to come on command. How did you manage that? Girl, I don't know. I just always heard that you could. 
But, like, I kept hearing, like, this could happen. So, like, it's funny in my, in my videos. I'm like, oh, my God, don't stop. Don't stop. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. And I actually do every time. Really? Did you, like, have – because that's a very – that's a mental gymnastics. It's a mental do. thing. Yeah. But I kind of just, like, I have to – it helps when the guy says it mm -hmm. and he chokes me. And then, like, if I tell myself, like, it's time to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a great power to have. Oh, thanks. Some guys need to learn that. Come on command. Some, right. some of them take too long. <laughs> for real for real well madison thank you so much for coming thank by you. it was such a pleasure to get to know you pleasure to get to know you too can you tell everybody where they can find you online well if you wanted to make the mistake of finding me online here's where we can go um you can go to uh instagram madison morgan x um and then whenever that gets deleted go to madison morgan x oh like hugs and kisses twitter is o madison morgan o h Madison Morgan um, and TikTok is official Madison Morgan. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall on TikTok, um, Holly Randall unfiltered. I actually have a uh, link page that you could just go to to find all of my links. Just go to hollylinks.com. That's kind of easier because as Madison can can vouch we get we get deleted sometimes yeah. so you know just having one place where you can just find all the updated Smart. links is the best of course if you want to support this podcast watch these interviews live go to patreon.com slash holly randall unfiltered thank you guys so much for joining us i'll see you next week yes thank you so much for yeah thank you for watching <laughs>